So today we're, I'm going to be talking about uh, Vue.js Composition API versus Options API. Um, and for just a raise of hands, how many people are here familiar with Vue or Vue devs themselves? Yeah. Um, so, okay, so for those of you who don't, for those of you who don't know, um, Composition API and Options API are two different ways of writing Vue components. So just a little bit about myself. I uh, graduated from Mountain Mountain Technical College, uh, the web development program. I'm currently a computer science student at the University of Utah, and I'm a junior software engineer at Online Image, where <laughs> my tech stack is Vue.js and Laravel. PHP isn't dead. A uh, quick intro to Vue, just for those of you who are less familiar with it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, how it's described on the Vue.js website is an approachable, performant, and versatile framework for building web user interfaces. Um, just to break that down a little bit, it builds on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript standards. Pretty. I would basically describe it. It's. It's when I'm uh, writing Vue.js, it feels like I'm just writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Like to me, that doesn't really feel like I'm writing a framework. It's just more more native, if that makes sense. Um, it's really performant, especially with the V8 build engine, and versatile, especially with the latest uh, release of the Composition API in 3.3. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff, and I'll talk about some of that at the end. So um, one cool thing I wanted to mention before we uh, get into it is Vue.js can be directly imported to your uh, HTML file, like this. Um, you just import it, and you can use it in an HTML file, don't even need JavaScript or a build engine or anything. It's not as fast or whatever, but if you need it for quick. The options API. What is the options API? Um, it's the traditional and the original way to write components uh, back when Evan Yu created Vue. I think it was 2014, sound right? I don't remember. Um, and it's based on a set of options that are uh, provided when creating a Vue component. Like example, you have your data, your methods, your computed values, watch, props, and your lifecycle hooks. Um, and it's more, I would describe it more of as an object-based approach, um, heavily object. So our uh, basic layout for an options API component, we have, at the top we have our script tag, um, and in, inside of that, notice we have the export default, um, and then we have our template tag where our template goes, and then style tag is optional if you wanna put styles. This is the standard, kind of standard format for all view components. It's similar to Svelte. Um, but one thing to note about the style too is you can scope this to style, so I could put style scoped, and it only apply to that component, not any children. Um, so what are the options of the options API? Um, well, first we have the data option, which uh, it's, it's uh, what it sounds like data. It's used to, uh, to declare and define the reactive data. Um, and yeah, it, it works the same way. It's the same thing as your uh, use state in uh, React. Um, yeah, so you just stick inside the export to default, we have the data options, or the data method, or whatever, and inside that we return whatever data, so we can put our, in this case, our count. Um, I know I'm very creative, a counter app. <laughs> um, we have our computed option, uh, which is computed, pro it's a computed options contain computed properties, which react are reactive, and but they're only recalculated whenever the dependent data changes. Um, so in this case, we have in our computed, um, option here, computed colon, and then we open the brackets, we have our double count computed value, and it returns this dot count times two. So every time the count will change, every time the count changes, that changes. And yeah, then we have our methods option. Um, I was worried about this being small, but I didn't know we would have a mile wide screen. So uh, the methods option, it's just, you know, your methods, your standard methods. Um, well, not standard per se, it's more of an object-based approach. So you don't, so you, in C there we have our methods, we have our increase count um, and our decrease count, pretty basic, just declare it like that. Um, and then one thing we, Vue also has is the watch option, which um, you can, uh, it watch option enables you to watch for changes to specific data properties and perform custom actions in response to these changes. So it's kind of similar to computed, um, but you can perform a lot more stuff with this. So like in this case right here we have, um, in fact, I can, let me pull up a code demo of that. Um, as you can see, we have a simple counter app here. Um, awesome UI skills, I know. Where is it? Okay. Sorry, it just, it just like zoomed me out. Can you guys see that? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. In here we have, with the watch, um, 
I'll go over through this really quick. But um, it's it's uh, it's pretty interesting. So like in this example right right here, um, all it does is it queries an API, um, and whenever this value changes here, um, it runs a check against it. In this case, make sure it's actually a question. So I can be like, is view better than React? No, okay, well that didn't go, anyway, but yeah. <laughs> it's just random, it's probably wrong. It's probably written in React, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so that's a quick overview to that. Um, then there's the props option, which everybody's familiar with props. Um, and in that, we just, inside of our export default, we'd have the props tag. And inside that, we can define our message and the type of data that it should be receiving. Um, it's not TypeScript typing. It's not anything like that. It's just so. Um, and then the simple, and then to pass it in, it's similar to a view directive like we went over on, with the last talk. Um, and just you pass it in like that at the bottom. Um, and then there's lifecycle hooks. Um, I'm just showing the simple, this one's the one the component's mounted. Um, you just throw another option in right there and run whatever code you need to. Um, you know, and view has all the standard ones, you know, like created, you're mounted, you're updated, you're destroyed, whatnot. Um, and then, so I guess the overall simple counter app, with the options API would look something like this. Um, you know, we have the data at the top, the computed option, and the methods, and then it runs through all that. And if we uh, see right here, the counter, yeah, programming masterpiece right here. Um, so and then there, but now let's just go over a few pros and cons uh, from my personal experience and from research I did uh, with other people's opinions across the, the, the internet. Um, I did not ask ChatGPT's opinion because um, one time I asked it to help me figure out a bug in a view component and it spit me back out a React component. <laughs> That's not even, I'm not even joking. So the pros, um, easy, it's easy, the options API is easier to learn. Um, and, for those who probably haven't coded much. So if you're more of like an entry level, haven't done much JavaScript, you'd be able to pick up on it pretty fast. Um, it's also, there's consistency um, and simplicity. It's gonna be, you know, where everything goes, it's predictable. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple like that. Um, there is other options that I'm not gonna go over now because like, uh, like the directives, but. And then cons, um, it's kind of opinionated. There's only one way to write components. Um, that's why I, I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm biased towards the composition API, but um, yeah. And then it's, it's harder to modulize your code. And for those of us who like TypeScript, um, how many people use TypeScript on a daily basis? Okay, so not that many of us. Um, it's not TypeScript friendly whatsoever, so. And then one thing I will mention is um, the, uh, in Vue 2, the options API is notoriously difficult to transfer to to upgrade to Vue 3 Composition API. Um, I'm currently working on a project where we are doing just that and it requires an entire rewrite of a front end if you don't write it correctly. So be, be aware of that. If you're getting into Vue, make sure you're doing the latest. Just stay away from anything old. It will ruin your life. Now the Composition API. Um, and throughout this, you're gonna hear it a lot about regarding the word composables and composition. Um, so what is the Composition API? It's the functional approach. It's like that you're used to in your React components. Um, it's, uh, it was introduced in Vue 3, technically Vue 2.7, 2.6, um, but it wasn't really, really uh, introduced until Vue 3. And it just offers an alternate way to manage the logic. Um, and generally it aims to provide scalability, reusability, and organization. Yeah. Um, so these, the setup, or the uh, basic layout of one of these Composition API components um, is very similar, um, except you'll notice up here in the script, it says script setup, that's important, because that indicates to uh, your build engine or to view that it's using the composition API. And then everything's the same, the template and the style, and if you notice I put the scoped in this one, that's what that would look like. Um, there's a couple new concepts, the composition API that I briefly mentioned with uh, compose, composition and composables and stuff. So we have function-based component composition, which is exactly what it sounds like. Everything's functional, and it's really nice. Um, and yeah, it makes it easier to understand, test, reuse, whatever you need to. Um, here's a basic example. You can use your uh, generic ES6 arrow functions. Um, yeah. 
And same with async and everything. It's just, it's like I said at the beginning, it's like just writing vanilla JavaScript. It's really nice. Um, and then there's composable functions and custom hooks. Um, and composable functions, if you can't tell, are kind of what makes up the composition API. That's why it's called the composition API. And um, with hooks, you can create um, your own reusable hooks by composing variable, various composable functions together. Um, so an example of a composable function slash hook would be this use mouse uh, one. Uh, totally did not rip this from the docs, but <laughs> um, yeah. So it just looks like that. You have uh, you import all your stuff, your function, um, and then you return and say this one's the mouse value, so it's x and y. And then on your component, you import your hook, um, and then you similar to how you do it, React constant x comma y equals use mouse, and that would work how you would expect it. Let me, I'll, I'll demo it here in a second, I'll take a minute, but um, then we also have the different ways of handling state. Uh, we have reactive state properties and ref. So the ref functions, uh, ref is your main reactive uh, data type, and you'll declare that by saying constant, whatever you variable, in this case count, and then ref, and then put in whatever value, similar to the use state, but it's a little simpler. And then one important thing to note is when you're mutating the data values of um, ref types, similar to um, use state in React, um, you can't directly mutate the uh, variable value, but you have to call, in React you'd call, um, what is it, the set state, or I don't remember what it is, but the, uh, but then this one you have to do the count.value to update it. You can't just do count plus plus, you have to do count.value plus plus. But when you're getting the data from it, Say so here at the bottom, you just have to call the variable name. Um, and then there's reactive types, which is very similar to ref, um, except it's pretty much, but it's also similar to how it was done in the options API. Um, and, and that it's just kind of object-based. So there's no like, um, I don't know what you call it, like, yeah, there's no uh, dot value or anything. So you do constant state equals reactive and then pass in the object with the count value. All you have to do is just state dot count, like there at the bottom. Um, so let's translate a couple examples from options to uh, Composition API to kind of show how that works. So for our data, um, we'll import the ref on the composition type, I mean on the composition component. And to translate it, it's actually less code. All you use the const count equals ref zero, you're done. Um, yeah. Computed is similar. Um, you'll import the computed from view and then you'll do Constant double count equals computed. Inside there, you do an anonymous function, whatever lo logic you need to uh, execute there. Methods, same as we went over earlier, it's just your standard ES6 uh, arrow functions. Well, I guess you don't have to use the arrow functions, but. And then watch is very similar, except um, you'll notice you don't have to write that extra function, the async get answer like you did in the first one. Um, you can pull that. Um, that logic directly into the watch. Uh, props is pretty much the same, except you'll do define props and inside of that to declare. But you can also, for more clarity, you can also do a constant props equals define props. So that way you can call props dot get me greeting message or whatever you need to, if that's something that's helpful. And then passing it in works exactly the same. Lifecycle hooks, not much has changed, except one important thing to notice to a uh, note is between uh, view two and view three, the lifecycle hook names and the composition API. The lifecycle hook names do vary. So in options API, you'd call mounted, uh, but in, I mean, sorry, in options API, you'll call mounted, but in composition, you'd do unmounted. So there's also an, a third option, which is using the composition, using composition within the options API. Um, and it works just like this. So we set up our component, uh, the export to default, but there is another option we can do called the setup. And inside of that setup, um, we write our composition API code and then return whatever data we get from that. So that's useful if you're migrating from an older version of you maybe, and you just start moving stuff. Um, or maybe there's some legacy library you have to use that needs the options API, but you still wanna write your composition code. Um, and then the simple counter app, the composition API looks kind of like this. Uh, yeah, so we have our count at the top, double count, increase count, decrease count, and whatnot. 
Uh, notice this does take a lot less code, which is one reason I like it. Um, so some co other cool composition API things we'll go over and then I'll demo some of this stuff. Um, is the composition API has access to the view use library. Has anybody heard of this or used this? No, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a library of like, about, I think like 200 or more uh, composition utilities, custom hooks and every, everything you can think of for Vue and it's really awesome. Um, and then how many React devs are in here? All right. This is called the Forbidden View Code. This is for you guys. Um, does this look like a React component to you guys? <laughs> so uh, React devs, there is no reason for you not to try View now. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, before I demo, any questions from anybody? Nope, okay. So. So uh, just to demo everything, okay, I think this one is good. Okay, so the, comp the composition API demo, I'll uncomment everything here. But, um, oh my goodness, HTML comments are the worst. I thought it would be a good idea to comment these out one by one. And then, let me just, okay. So in here we can see uh, all these things we just went over. So we have our counter here, um, and then we have the yes, no question, um, the greeting which is passed in from a prop, and then the uh, composable function or hook right here that gets the mass value. Yeah, works just like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, so, and then, yeah, the forbidden view code. Some uh, some guy posted that on Twitter a while ago and I thought it'd be funny to include, so. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it there, but since I got a little extra time, it looks like, um, just for those of you who might be interested, I'll uh, just go show off the view use stuff really quick. So. Yeah, look at all this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, they might even have like a use brain function for that one coworker, I don't know. But yeah, so there's like use draggable here. Um, just apply that to your component like that. You can drag anything around. Um, they also have some use dates and everything. Uh, also native browser support, so like use Bluetooth, use breakpoints, all this kind of stuff. Use clipboard. Just all this extra stuff you can import as you need it. Um, but yeah, so this is one of the cool benefits of the Composition API. Um, but other than that, that is it for me, so.